Welcome to the first annual BAFTA Games Awards 2004. The BAFTA goes to Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, the truly fantastic game Metroid Prime, Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker, Big Knight of these guys, Grand Theft Auto, and it is Project Gotham Racing 2, the best game of the year, it is presented to Call of Duty. It actually gives me a lot of pride for our industry to see that we're actually getting recognition. I feel humbled because I cannot develop a video game just by myself. On behalf of everyone at Valve and all of the gamers, thank you very much. To the game industry, um, you have literally raised me. BAFTAs, thank you for 20 years of supporting the gaming industry. The BAFTA goes to Journey. Super Mario Galaxy. FIFA 10. The Last of Us. Hellblade. Monument Valley. What remains of Edith Finch. Little Big Planet. Left for Dead. Vampire Survivors. Oh, yes! This is for the ones who didn't really fit in. You can sit at my table. Thank you. Look at that. How cool is that? In the words of Ellie, so effing cool. Joel? Joel Miller? Yeah, I said I, I, I played Joel. <laughs> You're not Joel. Joel's hair is better. Hideo Kojima. Do you think that this is a hiding place? Yeah. Please welcome your host, Phil Wang. Games Awards 2024! So good to see you. Uh, I'm your host, Phil Wang. Uh, I'm a comedian, writer, and hopeful future bad guy in a problematic Far Cry game. <laughs> now, this is the 20th BAFTA Games Awards. 20 years. Can you believe it? Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's how long we still have to wait for GTA 6. 20... <laughs> It's been an incredible year for games. Uh, the BAFTA Games Awards exist to recognize and celebrate the creative and technical achievements of the games we love. And tonight, we're gathered here to celebrate the fantastic work of games developers and creatives, both in the room and around the world. We cannot celebrate these achievements without acknowledging that it has been a difficult year for many in the industry, with widespread layoffs, impacting the livelihoods of friends, colleagues, and game studios. So it is more important than ever that we recognize your incredible achievements. We are proud to support and celebrate you all on your journeys as you continue to produce work that still blows our minds. It was an astonishing year for gaming, and that's reflected in the quality of our nominees tonight. We have such a great evening ahead. Are you ready? I mean, first of all, what an impressive venue. Huh? I mean, this room's so big, some of you haven't even rendered for me yet. <laughs> it's actually a bit bright in here. Sorry, can, can we just adjust the slider so the people on the right are barely visible? Uh, yeah. uh, just a bit, a bit light, lighter. It's so hard, this. And what's, what's barely visible? Was even. Uh, yeah, no, oh, perfect, 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 perfect. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Uh, now, just a bit of uh, housekeeping. Uh, please turn your phones on silent. Uh, it will make you more undetectable in stealth mode. Uh, but not you guys watching at home. You stay on your phones, get two phones, dual wield your phones, and get involved using the hashtag BAFTA Games Awards. As for everyone in the room, toilets. I've marked them on your map. <laughs> but if you're really desperate, you can set yourself a custom Wii point. 
like they can't all be winners. In the event of emergency, the fire exit is through that door, but you will need to defeat all enemies before it opens. <laughs> now, before we get started, we would like to thank our official games partners, Epic Games, PlayStation, and Xbox, and to EE, our audience award sponsor. I am so honored, genuinely so honored to be a host this evening. I've always loved games. Uh, my first console was a Sega Saturn. Anyone remember those? I mean, what, what an amazing console. I mean, you could play House of the Dead. I had a light gun. I had a light gun to go with it. Man, I miss my light gun these days. More games should let me use a light gun. It would definitely give me the edge in Animal Crossing. <laughs> give me those turnips now. Now, this year's nominees have given us such a wide range of experiences. I was a Jedi. I saved Hyrule, and I finally fulfilled my dream of getting intimate with a bear. Still don't know how I found that Call of Duty mod. Now, there's a lot of industry here tonight, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, important people, um, and as well as stand-up, I'm actually a bit of uh, an actor, too. Um, and as the games directors are in the room tonight, if it's okay, I'd just like to quickly audition for any uh, upcoming roles you might need in your filling in your series, if that's okay. Um, okay, uh, this is my audition for a guard in a stealth game after I've shot him in the back. Huh? <laughs> what was that? I guess it was nothing. Here's my audition for Link. Here. And here is my audition for Mario. Huh, well, that's your problem right there. Seal and the U-Bend's cracked. Uh, with material and labor, you'd be looking at 130, 150 pounds. Oh, sorry, that's a scene from his day job. Now, it hasn't just been, sorry. It hasn't just been a, it hasn't just been a great year for the big titles. You know, we've also played some incredible indie games this year. I love Chance of Sinar. Chance of Sinar, nominated tonight. A language learning game that recreates that sense of, I don't know what the hell anyone is talking about. The game equivalent of being on TikTok over the age of 30. <laughs> Cocoon, Cocoon is a puzzle game. Cocoon is a puzzle game in which you have no idea what to do, you're just frantically pressing one button. Just like my local bank cashier whenever I walk in there naked. <laughs> now, we have an incredible array of games being celebrated tonight, and please remember, it's an achievement just to be nominated, so congratulations on simply being here. It's uh, well done. Unless you're a plus one, in which case, just don't steal too much stuff, please. <laughs> Leading the nominations tonight is Alan Wake with eight. Alan Wake's here, Alan Wake two. Spider-Man two with 10. And Baldur's Gate three with an incredible 11 nominations. Unfortunately, there have been some snubs as well. I mean, nothing at all for Skull Island Rise of Kong. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is nominated tonight for best game. Best game, Baldur's Gate 3. I've, uh, there they are. I've been having loads of fun with Baldur's Gate 3. There are just so many difficult decisions to make that impact the rest of your game, you know? For example, it's taken me 30 hours, but I've finally chosen Penis B. I, it just looks like it shares my values. I don't know. Oh, by the way, uh, here is a list of uh, things my non-gamer girlfriend has called Baldur's Gate 3 to me. Uh, Balthazar Gang 3. Bowling Guys 3. Balding Goose, three. Balsamic Clays, three. Baldur's Gate, two, nearly. And this is the weirdest one. Phil, you're spending too much time on that thing. I think we should see other people. Not even close. Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2, also nominated for best game. Amazing. Amazing game. 
Insomniac's recreation of New York City is so realistic, I actually caught tetanus. It's amazing. <laughs> now, I know a lot about running around a city in a skin-tight bodysuit and mask. <laughs> Except when Spider-Man does it, he's helping the police, and when I do it, I'm arrested by the police? <laughs> What's with the double standards? We're both just mysteriously sticky men trying our best. <laughs> Peggy 18, remember guys, Peggy 18. Zelda, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is nominated too. <laughs> Zelda is a beautiful game, but I think the life lessons in it are a bit misleading. Like, you can cook chicken for five seconds and it's safe to eat. Or that it's a good idea to sneak up on a wild horse from behind. Or that you can build things by just gluing random bits of crap together. I mean, in Zelda, you can build a working airplane in that way. Whereas in real life, what you actually get is a Boeing. Alan Wake 2, Alan Wake 2 is nominated tonight. That's right. Now, as well as, as well as best game, Alan Wake 2 is also nominated for Animation, Artistic, and Technical Achievement Awards, deservedly. I mean, the graphics are incredible. I swear, half of the cutscenes look like real people. I, it's just extraordinary. Now, I personally relate a lot to Alan Wake myself. Uh, people in rural towns don't like it when I turn up, either. Now, guys, are you ready for a great evening of awards? Are you ready? I'm so glad to be here. Congratulations to everyone. It's so good to see you. So please, sit back, relax, and let us celebrate the hard work and endless creativity of an industry that makes magic every day. And what an amazing person we have to kick us off. He's the star of Sex Education and an avid esports player, Asa Butterfield. Thank you, everyone. I am very, very excited to be here. As an actor, I know how important it is to make a strong first impression. And there's nothing more exciting than when incredibly talented people enter our industry for the first time and immediately shake things up. And all of these exceptionally creative teams have certainly done that. The nominees for debut game are... Debut game. It's been a while since someone's wandered around this place. Viewfinder. And wanderers are always welcome. Dave the Diver. Cocoon. We are the chorus, the gods who remain. Stray Gods, the role playing musical. I'm afraid you have to die. This isn't justice. I can prove myself. And the BAFTA goes to Venba. Hello. 
Uh, thank you. This is pretty wild. Uh, I also have some words from our designer, Abi, who could not be here today. So I'm just going to read that from this piece of paper that I wrote down this afternoon. <laughs> We're very pleased to win the award for debut game. <laughs> Thank you, BAFTAs, for giving us this platform. I would like to use it to call for a complete ceasefire and end the horrific genocide that's still happening. Making Games is a group effort, and I want to thank my team, my brother, my parents, Pop Agenda, Laundry Bear, Victoria, Eka, and Ontario Creates. Uh, I was really happy to be able to show off the culture and cuisine that's very important to me. I would love nothing more than to see more such culturally rooted and local stories, and I think that Benba resonating with so many of you is a sign that there is a very strong space for games like that to exist. Thank you. Sound. Sound has always been an integral part of gaming. Apart from the golden era of silent gaming in the 1920s, of course. <laughs> who could forget Charlie Chaplin's Pro Skater 2? <laughs> but today, sound is a vital element of every game. This next award celebrates the very peak of audio achievement, so listen up. To present the award for audio achievement, please welcome comedian and journalist Ellie Gibson. Friends, gamers, lend me your ears as we delve deep into the award for audio achievement. And what a year it's been for lovers of audio. From the swishing of webs in Spider-Man 2 to the high-tempo rock riffs of Hi-Fi Rush, our headphones have been treated to some truly glorious sound waves. The nominees for audio achievement are... Audio achievement. I think we'll all remember this moment. Some more fondly than others. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. The odds are against us. And they will always be against us. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Now or never. I'm the hero here. Not you. What the hell's going on with Pete? Marvel Spider-Man 2. <laughs> Hi-Fi Rush. Okay, let's go! The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. You are not alone. Me. You are our final hope. Nightingale's heart. Where is it? Wow. Alan Wake 2. And the BAFTA goes to Alan Wake 2. Get my piece of paper ready. 
This is such an honor. Thank you, BAFTA. This is such an honor. So first, I'd like to um, thank my amazing audio team. That would be Tazio, Guli, Thomas, Josh, Annika, Kit, Henry, Villa, Pauli, Tanali, Arthur, Iro, Samuel, and Adam. And I'd also like to thank our partners, in particular, Dynamedian and Redpipe. Thank you so much. Now, modern gaming thrives on multiplayer. Gone are the days when I would have to invite all my friends around for a Minesweeper LAN party. Well, I say all my friends. It was my maths teacher, Mr. Pritchard. But boy, could that man click a small square. These next titles epitomize... <laughs> These next titles epitomize the shared thrill of games. To present the award for multiplayer, Please welcome a brilliant actor and voiceover artist who in the last few years has done the unthinkable, made a character called Clive cool. It's Final Fantasy's Ben Starr! Thank you. If there is one universally acknowledged truth in the games industry, it's that any single-player narrative masterpiece can be exponentially improved with a last-minute tacked-on multiplayer element. <laughs> Mass Effect 3, I'm looking at you, my sweet, beautiful, idiotic summer child. <laughs> and while I may or may not be joking, I'm almost certainly limiting my future employment prospects in the AAA gaming space. So, with my career in tatters, I'd like to reveal my own surprise mechanics and guide your collective gaze to this year's nominees, who managed to make multiplayer experiences and somehow not balls them up. In fact, they managed to not balls them up so much that they're all rather fantastic, and they managed to not balls them up so much that they've all been nominated for an actual award. Like, a good one. <laughs> like, like a heavy one. So there. Here are the nominees for Best Multiplayer. Multiplayer. Forza Motorsport. Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers Wonder. <laughs> Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Diablo 4. Party Animals. And the BAFTA goes to... Does it, though? Does it? <laughs> Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Hello, um, I'm Nelson Calvino, marketing director for Nintendo UK. Very happy to be uh, receiving this award on behalf of the development team that unfortunately can't be here, but is very proud um, 
about receiving this award. I have a message from the development team that are going to read to you. Um, the development team's wish was for everyone to play Super Mario Bros. Wonder their way. Whether you play solo, local co-op, or online, how you play is entirely up to you. In local co-op, you can work together with your family or friends and enjoy a friendly competition. The casual connection of the online multiplayer is designed to create a fun online gameplay experience where players around the world help each other free from worries about skill level and entry barriers. We are very honored to receive the multiplayer award. Thank you very much, BAFTA, and to all the jury. Thank you. BAFTA Breakthrough is an initiative that supports the next generation of creative talent working in Britain's film, games, and television industry. Throughout tonight's ceremony, we'll be hearing from some of these BAFTA Breakthrough cohorts and some previous BAFTA winners who will be sharing their journeys with us and giving a sneak peek at the forthcoming games. And to kick things off with our first BAFTA alumni story, let's take a look at the charming world of the tales of Kinzera Zhao. Hello, my name is Abu Bakr Salim. I am the CEO and founder of uh, Surgeon Studios and the uh, creative director of Tales of Kinzera Zhao, our debut game. I'm also a BAFTA breakthrough and also a nominee for my work in Assassin's Creed Origins as Bayek. Since the nomination, you know, I've, I've been really fortunate to have worked in, in more video games, do more TV and film. The Breakthrough uh, program really aided and helped connect me with other game developers as well as directors. I remember coming to BAFTA with these kind of crazy sketches and drawings and asking the team, like, can you guys help me turn this into, into a game? The connections they put in, you know, me in touch with have been really, really lovely and helpful. And I think like that has truly, truly helped and aided to get me to where I am now. Tales of Kinzera Zhao really was inspired by the journey of grief that I felt after I lost my father. And I think I've been trying to really find an honest and truthful way of depicting that. And my dad introduced me to games when I was a kid, so it only made sense to make a game, a piece of art that honors him. It's exciting, it's terrifying, it's beautiful, it's also incredibly uh, vulnerable, and I really do hope people enjoy the game when it's out. We all have to evolve and adapt with the times. For example, when I was younger, I wanted people to call me Philip. Then I became Phil, then Wang, then Phil Wang, and now finally, the Wanginator 3000. <laughs> this next award celebrates those teams that have consistently improved and expanded their titles. You're gonna love them, or my name isn't the Wanginator 3000. <laughs> to present the award for Evolving Game, please welcome Twitch ambassador Cyborg Angel and nearly at her two million follower mark, Sweet Anita, who has Tourette Syndrome. It takes a huge effort to make a successful game, but to reinvent a game year after year so that it still feels fresh and exciting as the day that it came out is truly a remarkable achievement. And the titles listed in this category are all fantastic examples of that. The nominees for Evolving Game are... Evolving Game. Cyberpunk 2077. Final Fantasy 14 Online.
No Man's Sky. Forza Horizon 5. Fortnite. Genshin Impact. Let the magic begin! Here comes the finale. And the BAFTA goes to... Shut up. It is a dickhead. It's dick. It's evolving. It's, it's Cyberpunk 2077. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here and actually this is such a special award for us because it was, it was quite a bumpy road for us, <laughs> to be frank. <laughs> but I want to just to thank to all my team and I don't want to say that it's the only development team that we are on behalf of here today, but also all other teams that are supporting us, be going from support, IT, finance, PR, marketing, just everyone did a great job, and thank you so much for that. But additionally, I want to add one thing more. That without community, it wasn't possible. So for community, thank you so much. You're the best. Thank you. The heart of any good game is its design. A well-designed game keeps, keeps you hooked from the moment you pick up the controller to the moment you realize three days have gone by and you really need to brush your teeth. <laughs> to present the award for game design, please welcome Outside Xbox and Oxventure's very own Jane Douglas. <laughs> Designing a successful game is an art form. It takes talent, ingenuity, and the ability to surprise and delight the audience at home. A well-designed game can rip you from your sofa and transport you to another world, and the titles in this category exemplify that. The nominees for game design are... Game Design. Dave the Diver. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The train will take us to a place where science and art meet nature. Viewfinder. Ah, it's interesting, it's fun. And I like that they're alive on creativity. <laughs> Cocoon Marvel Spider Man Two. Oh. 
And the BAFTA goes to Dave the Diver. Hello, uh, this is crazy. Uh, I really didn't expect this. Uh, we were nominated in multiple awards, but had no luck. So I just came here to cheer for winners. So, but anyway, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, giving this award. It means a lot to us. We just beat Zelda. <laughs> and uh, as everyone knows, last year was one of the biggest uh, year in gaming history. So I was just happy to stand next to these incredible games. But luckily enough, I'm bringing this heavy mask back to Korea. Thank you. Uh, so when I first came up with the concept, everyone was like a oh, chubby diver, pixel art ocean, and sushi bar. So what are you talking about? But we uh, trusted in the concept. Uh, we trusted in ourselves. So finally, we made it to BAFTA. Okay, so um, uh, thank you everyone for making us proud of what we have done. And a uh, special shout out to BAFTA for not having and not putting us on Best Indie Game category. Thank you. Britain. Britain has given the world so many sensational things. Football, Harry Styles, the correct pronunciation of aluminium, the phrase you walk, and our gaming industry is no different. This little part of the world we like to call home has created some of the most exciting and innovative games of all time. And this next award celebrates the very best from the last 12 months. To present the award for British Game, please welcome some homegrown talent. It's the studio head of Rare, Craig Duncan. Good evening. What a year it's been for British games. Every year, this country produces awe-inspiring titles, and this year is a stellar example of the variety and creativity this country has to offer. Congratulations to everyone who's been selected for this category. You truly are an inspiration. The nominees for British games are... British Game. Easy breezy. Cassette Beast. Yeah. There's millions of those things out there just waiting to sink their teeth into us. Dead Island 2. I think the survival of the human race may depend on the blood in my veins. Yeah, yeah man. Football Manager 2024. <laughs> Disney Illusion Island. <laughs> Viewfinder. Seeing you walk around this place brings back memories. Warhammer Age of Sigmar, Realms of Ruin. There is an artifact of power in the swamp. If we can claim it, we can cleanse the Oryx and save our cannabis.
and the BAFTA goes to Viewfinder. game happen, the whole team, everyone who contributed and made this a dream come true for us. We are very, very proud of this. We are very, very honoured. I just <laughs> want to draw other people into my speech, so we break that rule that we only have one person who can speak, so... Yes! Thank you. <laughs> also... Also, I want to thank Matt's parents, because otherwise this would also not have happened. So thank you, Matt's parents. Because... I hope they give snacks, because I'm very hungry. <laughs> I'm very nervous. <laughs> I guess, thank you, Kalum, for bringing the, everybody together. I want to thank you. Uh, we, wa we want to thank Sony for supporting us. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. We're so honored to be here. Let's go now. <laughs> Time for another BAFTA alumni story. My Child Laban's Born won Game Beyond Entertainment in 2019 for its immersive, story-driven game in which you help the child of an enemy in a post-war society. Let's hear from Aileen and Katerina about their experience and what we can expect from My Child New Beginnings. Hi, I'm Aileen Feste, producer and director of My Child Laban's Born. And I'm Katerina Böhler, lead game designer. In 2019, we got to win this wonderful BAFTA for Game Beyond Entertainment. And it's a gift that keeps on giving. It has given attention to our game, but also to the story of the Norwegian Lebensborn children, and attention to the topic of children born of war who are struggling and uh, suffering in conflict the world over. It has also opened a lot of doors for us, letting us meet interesting people, networking. We could just talk openly, right, about the things that they've been doing, the things that they've learned. And I think that's one of the things I love about the game industry, the sharing and the caring. We are working on a follow-up called My Child New Beginnings. The player is now given more agency to shape the future of the child. You play as a parent of a traumatized child and need to be able to recognize the trauma and help the child cope with this. We work with a child psychologist this time and hope that this game will give mental health literacy and best practice trauma treatment to players. And for the players that are wondering, uh, I've promised we will be able to deliver the game uh, 2025. <laughs> We're working on it. It's going to be great, and we hope to be able to show you guys uh, more about the game in the coming months. The artistic achievement present in modern gaming is mind-boggling. Whether it's a sharply rendered blood splatter when your character dies, a realistic look of horror from an ally when your character dies, 
or an incredibly beautiful Game Over title card when your character dies. Basically, I suck at gaming, everyone. To present the award for artistic achievement, please welcome an actor who's appeared in everything from Star Wars to Penny Dreadfuls to Black Panther. Say hello to Danny Sapani. This industry is all about pushing boundaries. And with every new breakthrough in technology or skill, our games are getting more and more visually remarkable. And this award honors those genius creatives who are at the forefront of stretching the limits of what we all think is possible in gaming. The nominees for artistic achievement are... Artistic achievement. Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> Cocoon. <laughs> Diablo 4. Killer left a message. Alan Wake 2. It's for us. We were all trapped in a horror story. The horror story wanted us dead. There's something I'm forgetting. Revenge is a weapon. Final Fantasy 16. sometimes wonder if I am controlling it, or if it's controlling me. Hi-Fi Rush. And the BAFTA goes to... Alan Wake 2. Thank you. Thank you, BAFTA. Uh, it's a huge, if somewhat lonely, honor to accept this award <laughs> on behalf of a, of a huge, huge development team. Uh, I'd like to thank Sam Lake, Kyle Rowley for just incredible, wonderful creative partnership that we had in this project. And then actually next to them, also our executive producer, Jonas Tamminen, for being sometimes stern, always compassionate in his stewardship of the project. Uh, but um, of course, the, the biggest thanks, thanks of all to the to our team. Uh, I got the pleasure to, to work with. I need to make sure that I mention. I can't unfortunately mention all the names, but I'm um, Trying to mention a few uh, key contributors and leads, leads that were part of the part of the team. So um, thank you, John Crossland, Johannes Richter, uh, Ron Fröhlich, Juhani Jokinen, Riho Kroll, Antti Puomio, Damien Stempniewski, and Nazareno Urbano. Uh, it's a privilege to to work with you. And uh, additionally, I'd like to thank also our cinematics director, uh, Antti Matta and cinematographer Mikko Riikonen, who were a key part of building a, a game that actually also features a lot of live action and how to integrate it all together. 
was a was a challenge, but it was was a pleasurable one because of these these two gentlemen. Uh, and finally, uh, building a visually complex game like this uh, requires a strong technical foundation. So, huge thank you also to our Northlight tech team. Uh, these pixels they wouldn't exist without you. Uh, thank you. Creating a brand new IP from scratch is no easy task. As the inventor of Phil Wang's cat moisturizer, I know that better than anyone. And I have the claw marks to prove it. This next award celebrates those development teams who have taken an idea from its humble beginnings and molded it into a brilliant piece of work we can all enjoy. Uh, and a quick side note, if anyone wants to buy 3,000 bottles of cat moisturizer, uh, please contact me after the show. To present the award for new intellectual property, Please welcome an actress who voiced the now officially most iconic game character of all time. Yes, it's the original Lara Croft, Shelley Blonde! <laughs> Thank you so much. Good evening. 28 years ago, I lent my voice to the original Tomb Raider game and the iconic character, Lara Croft. I'm thrilled to be part of gaming history and honoured that BAFTA have invited me here tonight. I know all too well how exciting it is to take something brand new and to watch it grow and become bigger than you could possibly imagine and the nominees in this next award have all managed to create engaging, unique, and highly entertaining IP that has the potential to stay with us for decades to come. The nominees for new intellectual property are... New intellectual property. Jusson. Viewfinder. The system is self-learning. Ever-learning. See now, there is no singular truth. No perfect answer. Dredge. Chance of Senar. Hi-Fi Rush. That's not bad. Dave the Diver. Doesn't say it. Viewfinder! Zero speeches planned, not two. No. <laughs> we broke rules because there's only one person to talk. 
Uh, yeah, oh, sorry. No, no. <laughs> um, uh, thank you again. It, it is such an honour, and also it's been such an honour to work with such an incredibly talented team of people on this game. Um, thank you so much. We want to make more viewfinder, but please give us money. <laughs> Part of what makes games so magical are their stories. Tetris, Football Manager, Candy Crush. All titles that gripped me and kept me wondering, well, what happens next? I'm currently halfway through the original Snake on the Nokia 3210. No spoilers, please. We are blessed by the sheer number of talented storytellers in this industry, with the ability to enthrall and charm you from the moment you press new game. To present the award for narrative, please welcome GameSpot's Tamar Hussein. Storytelling in gaming is unlike any other medium. The immersive nature of games means that the narrative doesn't just happen to you. Instead, you shape it, and you are part of it. With a truly brilliant title, like the games in this category, you feel the emotional beats, live the plot twists, and understand the character moments in a way that makes it impossible to put the controller down, and more importantly, leaves a lasting impact. The nominees for narrative are... Narrative. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Uh, Jedi. Remind our friend your wife. His guard are supposed to be dead. Dredge. Baldur's Gate 3. When the screaming starts and your mind is gone, the rest perhaps. Silence. It's something only I can do. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Do not look away. You witness a king's revival and the birth of his new world. Why are we written into the story? Alan Wake 2. It is you who shall bow to me! Very well. Come then. Show us the strength of your will. Final Fantasy 16. Rise and crown the kings. A reckoning is upon you. And the BAFTA goes to... Baldur's Gate 3. Like they said, um, it's a real honor and a privilege to be able to stand up here and represent the Larian writing and narrative teams and the entire team as a whole. Um, so much goes into creating the kind of stories we try to do. Just watching the clip, the visual storytelling, um, it takes such a, a team of talent. Um, I'd like to thank the years of creative um, contributions of the Forgotten Realms so much creativity went into that, and uh, to be able to build on that was really amazing. 
And um, most of all, I think, thank you to the players who were not only open to experiencing the stories that we wanted to tell, but then took them as their own and are still creating stories within that world and sharing them with us, and it's really amazing. Thank you very much. The BAFTA Special Award recognises the impactful work an organisation or individual has on the industry around them. And tonight is tr something truly special. To present tonight's special award is an industry legend. He's co-founder of the role-playing books Fighting Fantasy, co-creator of EDOS Interactive, and the man behind Games Workshop. Oh, and did I mention he's also a knight of the realm? It's Sir Ian Livingstone! <laughs> God, you look all so young. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> games are fun. Games are entertaining. Games are empowering. Games connect people. Games are for everybody. The special award is presented to individuals whom the Academy believes have made a significant contribution to their sector. On behalf of the BAFTA Board of Trustees, we are delighted to present the Academy's special award to Special Effect. In recognition. Yeah. <laughs> in recognition of the charity's inspirational work in transforming the lives of people with physical challenges. Through their innovative use of video games technology, the special effect team has brought enjoyment, inclusion, and a quality of life to people who might otherwise have been excluded from the joy of playing games. If you ever wanted a good news story about the games industry, bringing joy to people, or about technology, changing lives for the better, or about inclusion, or about empowerment, about the power of play, look no further than special effect. Let's hear from some remarkable people who have benefited from special effects' truly special work. With my disability, I'm limited to do things. I don't want to sound like a gameaholic, but it was one of the only things I could do for enjoyment. Special Effect is an amazing charity who helped people with disabilities to access gaming again. Yes! <laughs> I think it was my wife that told me about a charity that could help me to like continue to play a beauty. Yeah, just got in touch and uh, it's been an amazing journey ever since. Don't worry about that. Once Daddy got the equipment, that was her off and her words were, I'm now a gamer and she's been playing it and having a time of her life. I can't do a lot by myself, but I can play with you games when my own time. Which it has been important for me to have the ongoing support from everyone at Special Effects because as I've grown up, they've helped me by adapting how I game. No matter what MND throws at me, the guys at Special Effects have come up with solutions to allow me to still play games. Now we've been doing some really amazing work with IFA controller. And it's just it's so liberating for me. So I'll be honest, I didn't think special effects would be able to help me, but they tried different angles, different positions, and they made this brilliant system that I use today. It's too good to be true. They can do this. It was like, oh, You've got a new toy at Christmas. Gaming is fun, and that's the most important thing to me, is having fun. 
If I hadn't had the chance to game and be involved with special effects, I wouldn't be in my games and development and coding course at college because it opened my eyes to what I can actually do. Games are a way to escape whatever is happening in general life and allow you to explore new places in a fun way. It's changed my life, honestly. In the world of gaming, anything is possible. Don't let anyone ever say anything bad about games again. <laughs> games are a powerful good. So, BAFTA, please put your hands together for Special Effects founder and CEO of Special Effects, the amazing Dr. Mick Donegan. <laughs> and his son, Tom. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. My goodness me. Um, <laughs> whoa. Um, uh, uh, Tom, uh, my son and our COO, is here as a backup in case I tear up. It's highly likely that he'll be here within a few seconds. So, um, Right, uh, I'll fire away. Thanks so much. That's ridiculous. Thanks ever so much, all of you. Uh, right. Uh, um, and thank you, Ian, for that lovely, uh, lovely introduction. Thank you. Right, firstly, I'd like to say a heartfelt thank you to BAFTA for selecting Special Effect to receive this prestigious award. I'd also like to congratulate my tireless, dedicated team for going the extra mile day after day. In fact, uh, they've stayed on at the office last night to celebrate uh, and are watching this uh, and having a BAFTA party of their own with bow ties and everything. So, if you please excuse me. Hi, team. Hi, team. <laughs> yes. well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, they are a great team. A great team. Yeah, last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank all of those remarkable people in the games industry, many of whom are here tonight, who've supported, collaborated, and shared a few drinks with us over the years. I'll never be able to thank you enough for welcoming Special Effect, both as colleagues and friends. Together, we're making a real difference to the quality of life of so many disabled people all over the world by opening the door to the magical world of video games to them. There is so much more to do, but in partnership with yourselves, I'm sure that the best is yet to come. Thank you. One of the most important parts of the gaming world is its supporting cast. Anyone who's experienced the vast worlds of San Andreas or Tamriel or Untitled Goose Game knows that these incredible places are only as good as the characters within them. To present the award for performer in a supporting role, please welcome a brilliant actress and star of The Walking Dead, it's Eleanor Matsura! Producing a game takes a whole family of people, a wide range of talented individuals 
ready to step up and create consistently amazing results. And nowhere is that shown more clearly than in the massively talented supporting cast members in the titles of this next category. The nominees for performer in a supporting role are... Performer in a supporting role. Sam Lake as Alex Casey. She will rise. Tracy Wiles as Jahira. And call the part of blackness to the encrusted one's second face. So saith the wise among them. At the ready, Harper. In this alight, there will be victory. Ralph Einson as Sidolphus Sid Telemann. Well, that work. I think we're going to be good for this, sir. Mind the, uh... Thank you, Clive. But I meant that figuratively. We are your son. Tony Todd as Venom. <laughs> are against us but they will always be against us Deborah Wilson as Seer Junda <laughs> Andrew Wincott as Raphael excellent every possibility in and then hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair that's when you come knocking on my door. And the BAFTA goes to Andrew Wincott. <laughs> My, my, what manner of BAFTA is this? It is a heavy one, it's true. Don't wake me up. This is, um, this is extraordinary. I've made a few notes. I don't know if they're in the right order. You'll have to bear with me. Um, I'll try and be as quick as I can. I mean, this is it's just overwhelming. Uh, I mean, even to be nominated in the category with my fellow nominees and my fellow performers in this game is just humbling beyond belief. Um, I don't know how many years it is now since my first session on this game. <clears throat> um, I hadn't done motion capture before, and I, I turned up to uh, pit stop, and they said, yeah, you put your, your kit in the, in the locker. I said, what? My kit in the locker? Yeah, you put this, this um, Velcro bodysuit on. Excuse me? Um, and I mean, we, we were, we'd done all the tests. We were all set to go. The uh, sound was working. The avatar was behaving. Uh, and a fire alarm went off. <laughs> and out of nowhere, I was suddenly with everybody from Pit Stop standing on Croydon High Street <laughs> in the drizzle of a Monday morning. So this is glamour. People were walking past going, oh, I've seen that, uh, that bodysuit in m and I must get one. <laughs> I went back to studio. We were fine. Uh, there was no fire. Only in the nine hells. <laughs> but I have to thank everybody at Pit Stop, the technical wizards, 
the directors, the movement coaches, who gave me the freedom to find the irony, the charm, and the danger of Raphael, the devil we love to hate, or hate to love. For me, it was a gift. It was um, like returning to theater. Raphael is nothing if not theatrical. Don't bother me now. I'm an anti-hero from the 17th century. But every session was such fun at Pit Stop. Unbelievable. Even when it was wrong, it was, went wrong, it was fun. And then, how much fun was the endless invention? There came the incubus harlep. Um, you want Raphael to do what? I spent most of that session on my knees. <clears throat> and, then, and then came the song. Raphael's final act, Bobby, the creative genius behind the music. I only, I only met Bobby last night for the first time. We'd collaborated. We spent an hour in a, in a session. We, uh, we recorded the song. He told me exactly what to do. He said, uh, do it like this. Do it like this. Breathe here. Uh, it, it, no more. You've got no less. The timing's not right. And then he said, right at the end of the session, they're, going, they're watching the clock. We have to, you know, come on. We've got to move on. And Bobby said, okay, we do it one more time. Now forget everything I told you. We do it one more time. We did it. And that was the, that was the one that was used. Oh, uh, thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Um, very, very swiftly, I, I have profoundly and profusely to thank Larry and Sven. Thank you for this, uh, this, this opportunity. All the creative geniuses at Larry and Adam for writing Raphael, for giving him this uh, appropriately Baroque turn of phrase. Jason, the amazing cinematic, cinematics, thank you for, for this adventure. It's, uh, it's really been, been something. And thanks also to my amazingly supportive family, to my agent who has to put up with my increasingly demonic demands. And finally, I'd like to say thanks to the fans and followers of Raphael and Baldur's Gate 3 who have embraced this game from around the world and uh, have reached out to me with their own art, sometimes their writing. It's been really humbling how inspired they've been by this, by this game. I just say, please keep being creative. Keep creating these worlds, and maybe one day we'll learn to protect the one we're in. Final reflection. About 28 years ago, which coincidentally is the same year as Lara Croft. It's great to hear and see Shelley. I stood in a studio in South London with a lot of radio actors and voiced a game called Broken Sword. Yeah. The original Broken Sword. And I think it was the first game to use voice actors. I think it may have been released just fractionally before Lara Croft, but I'm not arguing. Um, but isn't it amazing that here we are, we're seeing these games celebrated tonight. Thank you, BAFTA, for celebrating them. The kind of detail, the sophistication, the storytelling. How exciting to think what games could be doing in another 28 years. But it's even, it's just great to be a part of this conversation and this community. Thank you, BAFTA, for this honor. Um, Final words have really to go to Raphael, or almost Raphael's words. What's better than a BAFTA you don't know? A BAFTA you do. Thank you. The great thing about gaming is that it can be a family affair. Uh, unless you only have one controller in the house, in which case gaming is a family bar brawl. But the titles in this next award showcase the very best in family entertainment. To present the award for family, please welcome two members of our BAFTA family 
host of Young Game Designers, Inel Tomlinson, and Young Presenter winner, Braden Bent. Gone are the days when gaming was the hobby of just the teenage members of the family. Modern gaming is something that everyone can enjoy, from the youngest members of the clan who love Mario to the elder statesmen who won't stop going on about Hogwarts. <laughs> and the games in this next award have managed to appeal to both of these and everyone in between. The nominees for family are... Family. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Cocoon. Hi Fi Rush. Dave the Diver. <laughs> Disney Illusion Island. <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy. Big moment. And the BAFTA goes to... Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Nice to see you again. Um... On behalf of the development team in Japan, um, I'm accepting these awards um, and just sharing some of their words. The development team included various uh, gameplay mechanics to allow people to easily play together, regardless of their skill level, so there can be a sense of togetherness when people are helping one another playing the game. Even young players who might be trying their first Super Mario um, for the first time, can enjoy playing this game together with their more experienced family members and friends, or enjoy being helped by other players around the world online. We are honored to receive these family awards. Thank you very much. Our next award is voted for by you, the public. Now, normally when you guys vote on things, it ends very badly. <laughs> but thankfully, when it comes to games, you seem to know what you're talking about. To present the EE Player's Choice Award, please welcome the queen of streaming, it's Yummy! It may sound obvious, but the gaming industry relies on gamers. You are the heart of any successful game. And ultimately, one of the best metrics for any title that there is, is the feedback from its players. Which is why it's such an honor to present the next category. The nominees for the EE Player's Choice Award are... EE Player's Choice. Cyberpunk 2077. You know, the, 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 the
Fortnite. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Lethal Company. Baldur's Gate 3. I saved you. And I'm here to save you again. The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. Marvel Spider-Man 2. All I want is to save you! I'm the hero. I don't get sick. The award goes to Baldur's Gate 3. David wasn't ready for this. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I kind of was, but you... Oh. Uh, plans change, as they do in game development. Um, so thank you, first of all. Uh, thanks for the people who voted for us. Uh, I was just thinking about how over a decade ago we started a Kickstarter campaign for Original Sin 1. Um, and we were basically trying to prove that this idea that we had to build a turn-based RPG was something that people really wanted to play, because uh, no one else would believe us. Uh, and I remember we were very uh, careful in saying, like, okay, when are we going to think that the campaign is successful? Let's take uh, maybe $100,000. Is that not too much? Maybe 200 or 150? Eventually, we, uh, we got over a million dollars. <laughs> Uh, which proves that uh, what we wanted to make is something that players wanted. And again, you have told us that we're making what you guys want. Thank you. Thank you very much. Another BAFTA alumni story now. Two of our 2021 Breakthrough Cohort joined forces on the mystical Mithrect Ambrosia Island. Let's take a look. I'm Elle Osley-Wood, and I was named a BAFTA Breakthrough in 2021 for my BBC documentary, Special Characters, which I presented and co-wrote. For me, being a BAFTA Breakthrough feels like a big arrow pointing in the right direction. I also love being in a big creative cohort of ambitious, inspiring people. That's where I met Alex, the game designer behind the BAFTA-nominated title, Roki, which I was a huge fan of. We were all hanging out in the wardrobe area, getting ready to get our photographs taken, and we started chatting. I was quite starstruck, but I hopefully didn't make too much of an idea out of myself. I messaged her afterwards a few weeks later to see if she'd be interested in taking on the role of Alex, the unlikely hero from, from Mythrect, our next indie game. And of course, I jumped at the chance to work with a studio like Polygon Treehouse. And to our delight, she said yes, and things went from there. So the BAFTA nominations gave us a great deal of confidence to take our next steps as a studio. They're a great calling card for our work and what we do, and allows us to keep on doing what we do best, which is to create enchanting worlds for the players to explore and stories to delight them. <laughs> Our next indie game is called Mythrex Ambrosia Ion. It's a narrative adventure where you're a British backpacker, shipwrecked on an idyllic island. Your job is to figure out what's going on and why everybody seems to have amnesia. Huh? It's been a really fun project to work on and I absolutely love my character. She's feisty, fearless, but she also has a little bit of work to do on herself. 
It's a game about new horizons, friendship and community. I'm in this. Huh. But also a good old-fashioned adventure into the unknown. Quality animation has the ability to wow, delight, and often deceive us. For example, you might not realize this, but I'm currently being rendered live by several very talented animators. Annoying because they've left out my six pack. Please welcome to the stage from GameSpot, Giant Bomb, Friends Per Second, generally all your favorite games related channels, it's Lucy James! <laughs> Animation brings worlds and characters to life. Every movement, from over-the-top sword swipes to minute facial expressions, have been painstakingly animated to look just right. This next category showcases some of the very best in the entire industry. The nominees for animation are... Animation. Waste as a story will change reality around us. Alan Wake 2. <laughs> Hi-Fi Rush. Bring it on. <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy. Marvel Spider-Man 2. I didn't for hours. Seems nothing. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Did I tell you to be more careful about who you scan? Come on. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. And the BAFTA goes to Hi Fi Rush. Okay, wow. <laughs> so, first of all, thanks to BAFTA and all the players who play the game. And personally, I would like to thank you to my wife, Vanessa, and my kids, Mia and Aiden, for the endless support. And, you know, here we're just a bunch of guys receiving this award right now. But behind this and behind the game, there's like a whole team of really passionate animators who bring this game into reality. So this is for them, actually. And <laughs> and I know the rules, but just a quick word for the in-game lead animator also, Hoichi. So he doesn't speak English at all, but he will try. He's going to try to speak some words in English. <laughs> Thank you, Bafta. In Hi-Fi Rush, thinking, thinking animations to music was a challenging task, but it was made pos possible thanks to the animation team and everyone involved. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love 
love me some gaming music. I cannot tell you how many nightclubs I've ruined by requesting the menu music from SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. <laughs> and as this next award shows, in the last 12 months, there have been some incredible pieces of music filling up our little ear holes. To present the award for music, please welcome the composer behind everything from Spider Man Across the Spider Verse to Little Big Planet, it's Daniel Pemberton. Hey, what a great audience tonight. Uh, it's actually, as much as I love, you know, big faceless corporations, I love more the artists behind these games and them being spotlighted here at BAFTA. That is really very special. So thank you for that, BAFTA. Very few people really understand the complexity of writing music for video games. Creating a memorable soundtrack that transport you, transports you to another world is difficult enough. But add that the demands that that can alter, adapt, and interact in real time make it one of the most challenging forms of modern musical composition. It is therefore a real honor to present the following works which have all excelled in this amazing art form. The nominees for music are... Music. Marvel Spider-Man 2. Alan Wake 2. If there is any hope of surviving, we must stand against the darkness. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Baldur's Gate 3. Assassin's Creed Mirage. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. And the BAFTA goes to... Borders Gate 3. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Obviously, I'm overwhelmed. If, if somebody told me 20 years ago that I would be here with you, beautiful people, I wouldn't believe it. So the very first thing I would like to say is thank you to the BAFTA Academy and the BAFTA Games members for recognizing the video game music as an art in, in its own right. Thank you so much. I would like to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to our director, Sam Vinke, who is genuinely the most caring person I've ever met in my life. He cares about the games we make, he cares about his people, and most importantly for me, he, even though he had no idea why I was singing down by the river, <laughs> he trusted me from the start to the finish. So thank you, Sven, for your... I would like also to say thank you to, to the music team, to my friends and colleagues, 
Victor, Georgi, Dari, and all the beautiful musicians that left a piece of their heart in the music, because I believe that if you don't leave a piece of your heart in the music, nobody can enjoy it, and nobody can truly understand the feelings that were running through your heart during the composition process. And at the end, I would like to say thank you to each and every one of you in this room for making this special moment in my life. Thank you so much. Well, congratulations to all our winners so far. Give it up, everybody. We are going to take a moment now to remember some of the individuals of the games industry who are sadly no longer with us. Let's pay tribute to their lives, their unique talents, and the incredible legacy they have left us through their work.
you to Aaron, Julie and Daniel for that beautiful performance of Late Goodbye from Max Payne. Our next award is Game Beyond Entertainment. This award celebrates those games that go above and beyond just simply entertaining us. The games that move us politically or socially and stay with us. To present the award for Game Beyond Entertainment, please welcome a recent BAFTA breakthrough voiceover artist who I've spent an unhealthy amount of my year listening to. You'll know her as Karlak from Baldur's Gate 3. It's Samantha Bayard. <laughs> Hey soldiers, how are we doing? In moving us, games have the power to change us. They can shift attitudes, introduce us to new experiences and perspectives, and help to bridge divides between us. And the titles in this category have certainly done just that over the last 12 months. Contained within is terror and beauty, despair and hope, horror and unrelenting joy. The nominees for Game Beyond Entertainment are... Game Beyond Entertainment. We are Worm Drama. Goodbye, Volcano High. of Senar. Chia. Tara Neal. Our hometown, thirsty suitors, full of gossiping ambience, parental expectations, and your past mistakes. Hope you're ready for some long delayed emotional catharsis. Bemba. And the BAFTA goes to Chia. They're not wrong, it really is very heavy. Um, I had a chance to catch up with Phil Crefo, who is the game director on Chia and also the co-founder at Awaseb. And he had a list of people that he would like me to thank, uh, so I will try and remember them all for you now. Uh, to begin with, he wanted to thank Thierry and Marie-Lou and the entire Awaseb family who I am confident are watching today, all in a group together, so congratulations. He also wanted me to thank Alexi Garavarian and everyone at Kepler Interactive. He wanted me to thank the partners, uh, Epic and also Sony PlayStation for their support. Uh, and he also wanted me to thank BAFTA for having this award, for celebrating this creative endeavor and to thank all of the nominees as well. So with that, I just have to say thank you, merci, and oleti. Time for another BAFTA alumni story. This time about an upcoming game from previous BAFTA winner, Zyber Scott, 
who created one of 2020's most celebrated games, Kind Words. He's here to tell us about its hotly anticipated sequel, Kind Words 2. Hi, I'm Ziba Scott. I run a small game studio in Boston called Pop Cannibal. In 2020, we won a Games Beyond Entertainment BAFTA for our game, Kind Words, Lo-Fi, Chill Beats to Write To. Kind Words is a game about writing nice letters to people. What is worrying you or stressing you out and you post it anonymously online for everybody to see. It really connected with people. They put anything that you could imagine wanting to share with people into this game. It's been a journey for us to try and understand where do you go from there. Winning the BAFTA enhanced my ability to connect to all these people that I didn't know before. For example, Katerin and Ellen, who made My Child's Lebenborn, another BAFTA winner. But we had a lovely call together and chatting about what can games do in this space. We're hoping that Kind Words 2 is going to be able to provide uh, beautiful, safe, plentiful connections. And there's all these uh, little players walking around that you can talk to. You can say, hi, how are you, to anyone. That's in a way what the BAFTAs uh, have done for me by connecting me and it's in a way what we're trying to do with Kind Words too is to provide everybody with connections with strangers all over the world in the hopes that some of them will just change you or them a little bit for the better. Our next category is technical achievement, uh, by which I don't mean something that's only technically an achievement, like when I eat five bowls of ramen in one go. These are achievements in the technical arts. Brilliant games require brilliant minds to make them work, and behind every blade of grass, every perfect sunrise, and every exploding goblin head is an incredibly talented creative working incredibly hard. The next award celebrates the best in technical achievement of the last 12 months. And to present the award, co-founder of Black Twitch UK and this year's Games London Ensemble, it's Ebonix. The technical aspects of gaming is the industry's unsung hero. Without the technical talents of some of the nominees in this next award, we wouldn't be able to enjoy the crisp, high-performing powerhouse titles that have hit our consoles and PCs over the last 12 months. The nominees for technical achievement are... Technical achievement. Starfield. You're part of Constellation now. Part of our family. Final Fantasy 16. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Alan Wake 2. No, 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 no. Marvel Spider Man 2. Horizon Call of the Mountains. And the BAFTA goes to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom.
very honored to be receiving this award on behalf of our team in Japan. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom features new mechanics such as Ultra Hand and Fuse, which allow players to combine in-game objects almost any way uh, they can think of. On the technical side, the development team worked extremely hard to ensure that the gameplay experience was as enjoyable and satisfying as possible. Thank you again, BAFTA, for this award. Thank you so much. Our final BAFTA alumni story is about the team behind Hellblade. The haunting game is back with Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. So let's hear from Ninja Theories, Dom and Melina. This is shaping up to be a good one. I'm Dom Matthews, studio head here at Ninja Theory. Hi, my name is Melina Jurgens, and I play Senua and Hellblade. I am Ninja Theory's character performance ninja. And the winner is... Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. Hellblade. Hellblade. Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. It was incredible. We went to the awards with uh, a few nominations, and we were hoping that maybe we could win one award. So when we won that first award, it was uh, amazing. Games can aspire to and achieve a remarkable exploration of uh, the state of the mind and the state of mental suffering. It's been a real pleasure and a real honor to be part of this. I think mental health issues can often be invisible and shown that games are just way more than just entertainment. They can have a big impact on people's lives. They're just a medium that can help reduce stigma. To have that recognition for making something that left people thinking and feeling was really fantastic. When we won BAFTA Awards, it suddenly put the studio on a different map outside of games where people started to pay attention to not just Hellblade Senna or Sacrifice, but I think other games, other games that have stories to tell. So Senua's saga Hellblade 2, it takes Senua to 10th century Iceland, where she fights to free her people from slavery. Senua is still experiencing psychosis, but she has grown to better understand her unique perspective. And it's a game in which we're really pushing into the things that we care about. Cinematic immersion, beautiful presentation, and telling a story that takes you on that very personal journey all in service of immersing players in Senua's new world. Unlike film or, or literature where you're a spectator, games give you that opportunity to see the world through someone else's eyes and help to understand the world as they see it. The focal point of most good games is the lead character. Whether it's a slick martial arts expert, a deadly secret agent, or a small circle with a mouth that eats cherries. What an enigma. To present the award for performance in a leading role, please welcome an actor who knows a little something about leading roles, the fabulous David Harewood. Uh, the lead role in a game is vital. It's how the players view the entire world. And as this next category shows, in the last 12 months, we've been treated to some phenomenal lead performances from some of the most talented members of the industry that we've ever seen. The nominees for performance in a leading role are... Performer in a leading role. The flavor is exquisite as spiced wine. Amelia Tyler as narrator. It doesn't look quite sure it is. It only stokes it. Me, my dad. Naji Jeter as Miles Morales. They were here. I don't want us to stop thinking about them. They want us to help people, to fight. I was a slave, a vampire spawn. Neil Newborn as a stereo. But now, I've been living in place. I've been living somewhere. Trespass upon any home, manipulate minds. You let me walk my own path when I needed to. Cameron Monaghan as Cal Kestis. You taught me what it truly means to be a Jedi. 
I have every reason to feel terrified. Samantha Bayard as Carla. But to be here with you in the city I love, in this world that I love so much, it's all I could really ask for. You hear me? These last few days. Yuri Lowenthal as Peter Parker. I was so sorry. And the BAFTA goes to Nadi Jita as Mars Morales. I uh, definitely did not expect this, and definitely do not have any notes written, because, I mean, going with my big bro and my other big bro, Neil, Nerd, Yuri, it's crazy. I mean, I did not expect this at all. Thank you, BAFTA. Thank you, God. Thank you, my family. Thank you, Insomniac, Sony, Marvel. I mean, it takes a village and a team to, you know, get this job done, and you all know the hard work that it takes, and, uh, whew, yeah, yeah. First time in London. Y'all look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Now I got to figure out how to pack this. All right, everyone. We made it. It's the big one. Best game. Are we ready? <laughs> The award that celebrates the height of achievement in this industry that we all love. This is the final hardest boss of the night. The Dr. Robotnik, the Bowser, the any enemy in Elden Ring. <laughs> the games in this category are all extraordinary. If it were up to me, I'd give them all the award. Uh, but it isn't up to me. And if it were, that would be a waste of everyone's time. To present the award for best game, please welcome an industry legend, the man behind titles like Doom, Wolfenstein, and Quake. It's the one and only John Romero. Thank you, thank you. What an honor it is to be here tonight. The scope and scale of talent on show in this evening's ceremony has <laughs> been mind-blowing. And if this is what, we're served, what was served to us in 2024, I can't wait for 2025. The titles in this next category have achieved something special. They all have that spark of genius, that unknowable quality that you can just sense when you first pick up a controller. From small indies to AAA titles, all of the games nominated in this final award share one thing. We players know that they will all stand the test of time and will be enjoying them for years to come. The nominees for best game are... Best game. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Marvel Spider-Man 2. We good? We good? It's my fault. Alan Wake 2. Wake has a double. Dave the Diver. Walk with me. 
Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Baldur's Gate 3. And the BAFTA goes to, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3. a bit of team. So we'll wait for them to be here. Um, thank you. Thank you, BAFTA. Thank you, everybody. Um, I still can't believe we're standing here. The, you look at the footage of all the games that have been nominated, and they, they look so fantastic. And I, I look at every single image of, of the game that we've made, and I know how much work went into it, how much effort the team put into every single microsecond of this incredibly large, large game that took us so long to make. Um, it's a testament to their incredible talent. They're representatives of almost all of our departments. Uh, so. Uh, there are a lot of people who put a lot of effort, a lot of heart and soul, uh, really a lot of themselves into uh, making Baldur's Gate 3. So this is amazing. Uh, so I want to thank our team. Uh, I want to thank uh, our friends uh, and family who supported us through what were sometimes really, really hard times. Uh, our partners who have been amazing. There's really a truckload of partners that helped us make this game. We didn't do this on our own. It's like a, I once counted it. I came at over 2,000 people that worked on Baldur's Gate 3, which is incredible, over six years. Um, I'm forgetting people to thank, but uh, our actors, because there's so many of you that are sitting here in the audience that are here uh, that have spent so much time in those suits and stand on Croydon High Street. Uh, so, uh, so thank you, thank you very much. This is super appreciated. You're and you look fantastic. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> That was the 2024 BAFTA Games Awards. Congratulations to all of tonight's winners, but also everyone who was nominated. You have all raised gaming to a whole new level, and you should be extremely proud. Give yourselves a round of applause, please. Personally, I cannot wait to see what advancements you have in store for us next year. 
even quicker quick saves, haptic constructive feedback, <laughs> a loading screen that tells you how you're going to die, nano transactions, anything is possible <laughs> in this industry. Thank you again to all of our partners for your continued support. And BAFTA is also proud to partner every year with the London Games Festival, which in 2024 has reached its ninth edition. It has been truly an honor to be a host tonight. This year's ceremony is now over. But remember, you can now select New Ceremony Plus and start the whole thing again with any awards you've won, but my jokes will be harder to understand. I'll see you all at the after party. Shelley Blonde is taking us all back to Croft Manor, and we're going to lock her butler in the freezer. It's so fun, trust me. But for now, thank you all for coming, and thank you all for watching online. I'm Phil Wang, and until next year, good night.